Good morning, 13th of July. Today, uh, yeah, we're here. This is uh, still here. Most modern looking place we've been so far. Still haven't got used to the idea really. You can see white marble buildings over there. It's quite nice from the window here. But, uh, today I'm off to a town called Mary. Got no idea what that looks like yet, but we'll see. I think it should be a little bit of a uh, desert we're driving through. I think about 350 kilometres today. So um, let's see what uh, Turkmenistan looks like outside the city. That'll be interesting to see. So, this will be the last ultra modern city we're in for a long time. Didn't actually realise we were coming to an ultra modern city. Okay, so now we're just leaving Ashgabat. Okay, Jamie? Yes. What a modern mini bush we have here. There you can see the mountain just there we came over. The other side of Moses in that. So. Okay, we're just stopping here at Abbey Bert. Actually on the Silk Road now, one of the ancient Silk Roads. There's many Silk Roads, of course, but this is one of the ancient ones. It goes all the way through Turkmenistan and to Uzbekistan that we're following now. But, uh, this place here, this should be an ancient Silk Road city where they used to uh, make pottery trade with other traders on the Silk Road. Um, this was used from the year 800 until the year 1200 AD, until uh, the Mongolians they invaded the city here. And uh, it took a long time because they had some very, very big walls here that protected the city. And the Mongolians, they were extremely tough warriors. So they waited and waited and in the end they finally captured the city here. So let's uh, go and have a little look around here. What did you find? Now we're really on the Silk Road now. It's not a place where Many tourists come, I don't think. Oh, it looks like a fireplace there. Yeah. Looks like it's Maybe even. Like yeah, it was actually. So there's the modern day Silk Road there, the one we're driving on once again. So this is Jamie on the Silk Road, it's got in total of exploring mode here, looking at all the small ones. I think he should be an archaeologist when he is an adult. Yeah. I think he'll be interested in that, just sitting digging things out of the ground. He's a gift. The problem is when he's cycling, not the best idea because he ends up with a bag full of stones and rocks and all kinds of things he picks up. Something we don't see in Denmark or only in the zoo. <laughs> this or these? Just camels these are camels. Down the road. <laughs> camels walking down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Just taking a walk on the highway. A guy just told us that the camels, um, they have camels to use uh, wool for carpets and also for warm, warm socks in the winter time. So it must be getting cold here in the winter, even though it's burning hot now um, and she says they also uh, drink the camel milk but it's not everybody that their stomachs can cope with that you have to be used to drinking it okay in a short while we'll be leaving you can see the mountains here that's still around actually we're really really close to Mashhad at the moment Mashhad is just behind those mountains so we were yesterday morning so we've had a quite of a detour to Ashgabat and now we're pretty close to Mashhad but then we'll be Turning left soon, heading east away from the, the mountains here and across the flat desert. Here there's a whole herd of camels just going for a walk down the motorway. Okay, now there's even more camels. Camels everywhere now. <laughs>
Karen Town called Tien. It's on halfway to Mary. Traditional place, can have some lunch in. Completely different to what we saw this morning in Ashkaba. Yeah, it looks more like the real Turkmenistan that we... So now we have come to the restaurant here. We are going to have lunch today. This restaurant is used often for people traveling from one side of the country to another. And it's known for these meat pies here. And you can see the city on the side inside the oven. So we're going to taste that now. Well, this is the room here where you sit. Wow, traditional way. They just told that they lie down and eat like this. <laughs> Sounds very comfortable. But this is a traditional Turkmenistan, what did you call it? Herd or something like that? Paris. Don't do this. Don't do this. Smoking. Smoking. Never do it. In the tent, no. You even have a TV in here. And you have. So now we're in this very traditional place, but you saw this morning we started in Ashgabat, which is a completely different city, a city that we never expected to find in the middle of uh, Central Asia here. It's, uh, it's actually a, a government project by the former um, president of the country. He, uh, it was his brainchild, so all those buildings you saw yesterday, they're actually government buildings, all built by a government project financed by the, the gas that they sell here. It's, uh, Amazing uh, city to see and drive through. But, uh, so they have different rules, so you can sit and eat. He was in there before, but it was a little bit too hot, so we had to move out. Not a little bit, it was very hot. It was very hot. <laughs> it's 41 yeah. degrees now. Right? Yeah, 41 degrees. Mm. In a tent. Mm -hmm. Oh, here. And then there's things here, you can choose also sit in the floor. It's a lady in traditional dress. And we have this cooling machine right behind us. <laughs> yeah, so here in Turkmenistan they have tea as well, but you get it in a kind of dish. <laughs> drink out of that. That's a cup. Mm. You drink like this. I think you drink cup like this. And so you drink the tea. So this. That is not normal. In Denmark you use cups, but mm. here you use uh, you use to uh, have um, a bowl and yeah. that in a bowl, yeah. This is the center of the room. This is the bazaar. And here we have the new hotel with the name Mari. Amazing buildings. It's a monument of our first president and the library. This is the local mosque. Yeah. Okay. It used to have the blue dome. I don't know what happened. <laughs> they colored it. This is three years old, the mosque there. So this is the town of uh, Murray or Mary, I'm not sure what you, how you pronounce it. Pretty much in the centre of Turkmenistan. This is our hotel and that was the National Museum there. Another different buildings again in white. I 
Now this hotel, believe it or not, this is the first hotel of all the hotels we've stayed in where there's no Wi-Fi. Nothing at all, not even anything from the surrounding area. Can't pick up a single Wi-Fi signal. We also read on the internet there's only 5% of people in Turkmenistan have access to internet and Wi-Fi. And there's no Wi-Fi in many of the cafes and restaurants as well. So Yeah, that was funny, even though it's a big hotel, there's no Wi-Fi at all. And, uh, in Turkmenistan there's five main um, kind of tribes of people called Turkmen and they uh, most of them have fixed arranged marriages to just to keep the bloodline within the different ethnic groups so uh, you can see they've got some quite distinct features different to other people we've seen from Turkey or Iran so quite an interesting place but uh, we don't see many people around you can see the National Museum there, not a single car in the car park, so I'm not sure where all the people are, but uh, some pretty impressive monuments and buildings. And this is the Natural History Museum. I'm just going to find something to eat here in the town here. So, now we are just sitting here in Turkmenistan, <laughs> going to have dinner here with our guide Nadia. They have we are here with alcohol, <laughs> we think. <laughs> but very nice restaurant, nice little garden here. Hmm. A nice place to sit. Well, this is some Turkmenistan bread here, some kind of butter inside, and then baked on the barbecue. <laughs> Kebab, potatoes, good french fries. Everything is good. <laughs> And we're going back to uh, Greek salad. Oh yeah, Greek salad. Yeah. We always like Greek salad. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It was from Greece ago. Lots of time ago. <laughs> oh, I'll wait a bit. So that was the end of our first full day in Turkmenistan. It will actually be our only full day in Turkmenistan as well because uh, tomorrow we'll reach the border, hopefully about 2 o'clock, and then we'll cross the border to Uzbekistan. So. Uh, then we hopefully should uh, cycle a short way to a hotel we found on Google Maps. So from tomorrow, we are back on our own again. So uh, that should be good. And then all these videos I've been making for the past two weeks that nobody's seen yet, you'll be able to see, hopefully, if the internet works. Not sure how fast the internet is yet. Uh, it could be really slow, like we've seen some places, but we'll see how it goes. And the main thing is that uh, from tomorrow, we should be back on the bicycles again. And we'll see uh, heading to Bukhara, that's where we're going to head to now. And then I think we'll probably stay there a few days. We're in no rush now, we've got 30 days in Uzbekistan, then only 500 kilometers. So, uh, have to see how we cope with the heat as well. That's going to be the big question for the next uh, period here in Uzbekistan, here in the middle of the summer now, middle of July. So, this is the hottest time of the year in one of the hottest parts of <laughs> Central Asia. So, uh, I think the challenge is going to be the heat. Well, we'll see how we get on. First, we just have to um, get ourselves into Uzbekistan and then we are on the bikes again. So that's been a good uh, two weeks with buses and uh, mini buses and guides and lots of nice hotels you've seen. So uh, and tomorrow it's back to basics, back to camping, back to bed and breakfast, back to the normal traveling life. So, uh, okay, we'll be back in the mini bus tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you.